हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू द ऑनलाइन सेशंस ऑफ द पाउडर मेटलर्जी माय सेल्फ विवेक परिक वी वर डिस्कसिंग द पाउडर मेटलर्जी इन दिस यूनिट सो व्हाट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव सीन द व्हाट डू मीन बाय द पाउडर मेटलर्जी वी हैव आल्सो गोन फॉर द थिंग दैट इज द डिफरेंट स्टेप्स व्हिच आर देयर इन द पाउडर मेटलर्जी एंड आउट ऑफ दैट थिंग वी हैव स्टार्टेड आवर वेरी फर्स्ट स्टेप दैट वाज नोन एज एन पाउडर production method how the powder production methods are there they are divided into four main categories that was the mechanical uh, that was mechanical physical and all that things we have done so out of that thing we have discussed all the mechanical powder production method so whatever the remaining thing that is the chemical methods physical methods and the electrochemical methods that we will be discussing in our today's lecture so let us begin this lecture with the thing that is the powder production steps and out of that powder production the second method which we will be starting that is known as in physical powder production method so what is this physical powder production method this method is the thing due to the physical changes that means we are changing almost the state of the matter we are changing and out of that thing the very first method we will be seeing that is known as in condensation method what do you mean by the condensation as the name suggests condensation means we are converting the particular gases into the liquid and from that liquid we will be condensing to the solid so this method or this aim we will be taking and we will be going for the powder production so the first method which we will be using that is known as a condensation method you are aware about the thing condensation okay so the same thing we are applying it over here so what is the thing this method employs to the principle of condensing the metal vapor to obtain the metal powder as i told you the vapor will be converted to the metal powder now it is this method is suitable for the volatile metal which are transformed into vapor easily that mean metals are very difficult to get converted into vapor so this method is not employed to each and every metal it is only done on the certain metals why because each and every metals boiling point is so much higher so it is not an economical thing and we require such type of the furnaces to convert it into that particular part so it can be employed whose boiling point is less for that material only we can use this condensation method it is carried out in the controlled atmosphere to avoid the formation of the oxide so that what we are doing we are going for the condensed that means the controlled atmosphere we will be going why because if there is not a controlled atmosphere what will happen your metal will react with the oxygen of the atmosphere and as a result of which what will happen the oxides will be formed so to avoid that oxides we will be going for the controlled environment for which metals we can use we can go for the powder production method for the zinc magnesium cadmium why because their boiling points are less clear so now let us see the figure how does it happen so this is the figure here there is a flame generation is there this flame is generated what will happen due to this thing this metal pieces will convert into this liquid form and out of that liquid it will start into formation of the gases this gases will move upward gases has a tendency that it will move away wherever the space is there so it will move in this way over here and here you can see condensers are placed so what will happen there is a temperature drop will be there so this vapor will fall down as a part of a liquid droplet and during the falling and during this cooling what will happen it will convert into the powder and you can see the metal powder will be there at the bottom so this is how you can create powder from the metal with the help of the condensation method clear so very first method of the physical powder production method now comes the second one that is the thermal decomposition its second name that is carbonyl process the second one now what do you mean by the carbonyl you might be aware about the thing oxides hydrides that means the metal reacts with the oxygen it will give you oxide metal reacting with the hydrogen gives you hydride halide the same way when metal reacts with carbon monoxide the material which is formed that is known as an carbonyl method so we will be using that technique in this method metal is reacted with carbon monoxide under the pressure to form the carbonyl method clear as i told you now this carbonyl they decomposed by heating the vapor at an atmospheric pressure then co gas which is produced is again reused so let us see this is the equation f is solid it is a bulk we are reacting it with a fico that is carbon monoxide so what will happen we will get a carbonyl 
कार्बोनिल हैज अ टेंडेंसी दे आर ब्रिटल इन नेचर सो व्हेन यू गेट आयरन कार्बोनिल हीट द मटेरियल विद द हैमर एंड ऑल व्हाट विल हैपन इट विल डिसइंटीग्रेट इट विल डिसइंटीग्रेट एंड अ स्मॉल पाउडर पार्टिकल्स विल बी गेट आफ्टर दैट व्हिच पार्टिकल्स यू आर गेटिंग द पार्टिकल्स व्हिच वी आर गेटिंग दे आर ऑफ द आयरन कार्बोनिल सो वी हैव टू रिमूव द कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड सो व्हाट यू विल बी डूइंग go for the heating at a high temperature what will happen your carbon monoxide will go away and we get the iron this is a bulk iron this is a powder iron we are getting and this carbon monoxide is once again reused for the next batch so this is how thermal decomposition method works which are the thing metal majorly iron and nickel they are the metals which can be powder can be produced with the help of this carbonyl processes clear the carbonyls are volatile in nature and it the temperature range which takes place that is be, between 150 to 400 degrees celsius and one atmospheric pressure that means we can achieve this method very easily as compared with the condensation method so this was our second method of the physical powder production that was the thermal decomposition method and there are only two methods which are there for the physical powder production method now we will be going with our third category of powder production that is known as in chemical powder production method and in that let us start our very first thing that is the reduction method you will be aware about the term reduction what do you mean by the term reduction reduction is nothing but removal of the oxygen or adding of the hydrogen that process is known as a reduction method so if you are adding hydrogen what will happen by addition of the hydrogen you will get the hydride hydrides has always a tendency of a brittle in nature so we will heat the material disintegrate the material and we will get the thing that is the powder of the material so this method is based on the principle of breaking oxides or halides of metal into metal powder by using suitable reducing agent now the reducing agent can be solid or a gas as carbon hydrogen ammonia and carbon monoxide so powder of iron copper nickel they can be obtained with this reduction method so you can see over here copper we are taking copper has been reacted with a carbon monoxide or you can say coke and after that what we will be seeing by the introduction of the hydrogen you can see this particular thing see this is the thing cuo copper oxide metal is there then with the help of the hydrogen it will reduce here there is a pure copper so you can see copper plus h2o gas this gas will goes away from here and whatever the thing which is left that is your pure copper and take this copper heat the material and you can go for the particular powder from this material clear so that was the reduction method second method which is there in the chemical powder production that is the intergranular corrosion intergranular corrosion what will happen we are intentionally going for the corrosion how we are going for the corrosion that is the between the intergranular grains between the two grains we are going for the corrosion so what will happen your material will become brittle and as a brittle heat the material you will get the powder the same things applies over here you can see it works on the principle grain boundaries corrode faster than the grains as comparing the grain boundaries with the grain your grain boundary will get corroded faster so the grain boundary area of metal corroded by suitable electrolyte so what we will be doing we will be taking some electrolyte and as a result of that electrolyte what will happen that electrolyte will give the corrosion in the grains between the grains due to the corrosion the grains separates out in the form of polycrystal and metal due to that what will happen the grains goes away and there is a gap between the two grains stainless steel powders are produced by this method so due to that thing what doing by the corrosion we are taking away the grains uh, the, we are taking the between grain boundaries and due to that there is a space which is there so the material will become a brittle and by heating it you are, what you will get we will get a metal powder from this thing you can see over here we are doing this thing so cracks will be formed why this thing happens these are the different grains which we have corroded so what is happened the material is having a cracks due to that crack it is easy to get break down so with the help of this method we can go for the powder production major stainless steel materials powder they are manufactured with the help of this method clear
Now going for the third method, last third last method, that means the last method of this chemical powder production that is the precipitation method. This method is based on the principle that a less noble metal displaces the more noble metal in an aqueous solution. Now, you will be knowing about the precipitate that the material will get bulk with each other and the precipitates are formed and that precipitates by using that precipitate we will be going for the powder production. The more noble metal the separates out in the form of precipitate that means whatever the material we are having which will be here as a more noble metal that will get the precipitates and it will settle down at the bottom. So, AG. SN, Cu, these are the metals which we can use this thing and the precipitate whatever we are getting, they are always brittle in nature. Take that precipitate, heat the material, you will get the powder from that particular thing. So, this was your precipitation. In all the three things, intergranular corrosion, what we did? We did a chemical reaction. In this precipitation, what we are doing? Less noble and more noble metal are separated out with the help of the electrolyte and all. And due to that chemical thing, we have done what we have done. We are going for that thing. And the third method which we have done, that is the reduction. It is also one of the chemical reactions which is taking place. That means there are three methods in the chemical powder production method. Okay. And the last method that is the electrochemical powder production method. How does it happen? It uses the principle of the electro deposition and electroplating. You will be knowing that a silver on a copper spoon if you are going for the silver, silver plating and all that is done with the help of the electro deposition or electroplating. The same method we are applying it over here. It is done in the aqueous solution. How we are doing? We are going for the plating continuous. Powder can be obtained in the three ways, either the first one that is the deposition as hard and brittle mass and which will be further crushed to the powder. Second one deposition as soft and spongy substance with the help of rubbing we can remove it and the third one that is direct deposition of powder drops at the bottom. Let us see how it happens. Which metals are prone for this thing that is the zinc, tin, copper that type of the material. The powder can be formed with the help of this method. Let us discuss it with the help of the figure. Here you can see soft and spongy. This is the second one. First one hard and brittle metal which is there on the material and the third one that is obtained at the bottom which are not able to get on this particular surface and this is your anode. And this will be your cathode. So what you are seeing? You are seeing that anode was used and the cathode that is the zinc material is based on this material and by rubbing this thing what you will get you will get the powder and whether you are not getting the powder it is a brittle in nature so by removing this metal what you will get you will get this particular metal as a soft and the brittle material hit the material get the powder and the powder will be with you clear so this was your electrochemical method and as a result what we have done we have done or we have discussed all the powder production method they are physical chemical and electrochemical in this lecture and we have already discussed the mechanical one that is in our previous lecture clear so now let us discuss it with the help of the second going this is the basic setup anode cathode this anode will be depositing on the cathode and will deposit in this way on this particular material. In this way we can find out this thing. So, we will be going that which are the different types of the particle shape we are getting. Which type of the shape? Spherical, rounded, cylindrical, spongy, aggregated, cubic, flaky, acicular. How it look like? They are in this way, three dimensional view you can see. This is how you can get the different types of the particles which are getting from the particular powder production method. Clear? And now we will be starting with our second step of powder metallurgy that is known as a powder conditioning method. As we I have discussed in the last lecture, what is this powder conditioning? That is nothing but mixing of the different types of the thing. Why? Let us see. Powder conditioning that is of the two types, either mixing or blending. These two things we can do. What is blending? Process of mixing powder of same chemical composition but different size. Same chemical but having a different size. Whereas mixing means process of combining two different powder chemistry. If we are taking the two different things, that means alloy, if you are using, we will be going for mixing. If it is a pure metal, we will be going for the blending part. Clear? 
बेसिक डिफरेंस बिटवीन मिक्सिंग एंड ब्लेंडिंग मिक्सिंग टेक टू डिफरेंट मेटल ब्लेंडिंग द सेम मेटल बट डिफरेंट साइजेस three things we are adding why we are doing this thing for the three things which are the three things they are the additives binders lubricants binders will help us for the binding of the particles that means it will get closer particles and will stick the particles with each other the metal particle lubricants they are used for the reducing friction we are using metal whenever the metal powder will get nearer to each other and they will rub with each other the surface will getting rub with each other what will happen the friction will be generated to avoid that friction we are using lubricant the third one additives why additives for the improvement of the properties of the material so three things we are adding lubricant for joining or sticking purpose second uh, sorry binder for sticking purpose second one lubricant for the frictionless thing and the third one additives to improve the properties of the material now a single powder may not have all properties so what we are doing the powder of different material are blended with each other for the desired properties so why the blending to impart uniformity in the shape of the powder particle to facilitate the mixing of different powders to impart the wide ranging physical and chemical properties to improve flow characteristics of the material so these are the things why we are carrying out the mixing and blending thing and the last one to increase the green strength that means the strength by adding the binder then on what will happen they can resist their shape certain and they will not get break down how we can go for the mixing and blending the different types of the things which are used that is the rotary drum in this drum this drum is allowed to move so what will happen all the things will get mixed with each other then there is a rotating cone rotating double cone here rotating double cone you might have seen in the cement mixer machine that is this type of the thing so it will move and as a result the mixing will take place then there is a particular blade type of the mixture is there so this blade is allowed to move and as a result what will happen the particular mixing will take place and the last one the most efficient one screw mixture screw mixture it what will happen this screw mixture will move and proper mixing of the material will take place clear so this was about your second step that is known as in powder conditioning method so we have discussed two steps till now that is powder production and powder conditioning method clear so in the next lecture we will be going further for the different types of the steps that is powder compression and sintering we will be discussing in our next upcoming lecture clear till then thank you